Yes, class. So am I audible to all of you? Asalaamu As Alaikum. Okay, class. So in the last class, we had stopped at the intrinsic semiconductor. So types of semiconductor, let us complete with this lesson. So see class, intrinsic semiconductors were pure semiconductors. You didn't have any kind of purity, impurity in it. No other atom was added. But if you talk about extrinsic semiconductors, so extrinsic semiconductors, these are also known as doped semiconductors. Doped semiconductors. Now, what is meant by this? See, certain atoms are there. If you add these atoms to the crystal lattice that is present, silicon crystal lattice, the way we had seen in the earlier class, same way. So if you add these atoms into the crystal lattice, this is pure lattice right now. But when you add this, this becomes impure. Now this pure, this will become impure. So these elements which are added these are known as dopants. And this entire crossing is known as doping. So when you add certain atoms. Now, depending on these types of atoms that are added, you have two types of dopants. One are pentavalent dopants and second one is trivalent dopant. So dopants which have five electrons in their valence shell. In chemistry, you know, you must have heard of phosphorus, arsenic. All these have the valencies when you write it. See antimony and all when you write it, it is to the power five minus you write it you know, like this or, so these atoms that have five valence electrons, those are pentavalent dopants. And on the other hand, that has those that have three electrons. These are trivalent dopants. Like the entire family of boron, boron family, boron, indium, aluminium, all these. You write it now, aluminium 3 plus. So these 3 plus, 5 minus, these are basically signifying the dopants. Now, based upon this, you have two types of extrinsic semiconductors. Remember, I had mentioned you N type and P type. Depending on this, only you will have N type and P type. Uh, do one thing, note down this page, then we I'll start first with N type, then P type. Then we'll come to PN junction. Note it down and whenever you are completing, please keep on texting me done so I have an idea that you all have completed.
Others also have completed apart from Khalid, Memuna, Salman, Dan. Okay, let's start with N type semiconductors. Now, see, N type are what? No, just remember if the pentavalents are used, you get N type of semiconductors. If trivalents are used, you get P type of semiconductor. That is just the difference that will come. Let us see the mechanism. See, for N type semiconductors, these have pentavalent dopants like silicon, silicon, silicon everywhere. But see, in the middle, I have replaced one silicon atom with phosphorus, and phosphorus is a pentavalent dopant, pentavalent atom. Silicon has plus four in its valence shell. So now what will happen? Silicon has four electrons. For phosphorus, what will happen? All the four electrons of the phosphorus will get used up. These are all the four electrons of phosphorus, but phosphorus has five valency. The silicon has plus four. That means one here, one here, one here. While phosphorus is having one more valency, no, one more electron. That will be present over here. This is the weakly bounded electron. This electron that you see, this is the weakly bounded electron. Class, listen here. This electron that is present, this is making it negative, more of negative. Now see, energy, again, you'll have, you'll put thermal energy. This thermal energy is value only, I'll tell you. This is 0 0.045 electron volt. So this is basically the thermal energy. This is basically the thermal energy. This energy frees this electron. This is weakly bounded electron. So as you strike, as you give this electron 0 0.045 electron volt, this electron becomes free electron. And as it becomes free electron, you'll have more of electrons over here. Can you notice here you have electrons in majority? This is just one phosphorus atom I have shown you. No, so many phosphorus atoms will be present in this crystal lattice because you have doped it with this uh, dopant. These are these dopants, pentavalent dopants. These are known as donors because they provide you extra electron. So that's why here the number of electrons will be greater than the number of holes. Here, number of electrons will be greater than number of holes. Now let's come to the theory part. So impurities are added in parts per million. Electrons are generated by two mechanisms. See, through the donor atom, it means through the donor atom means directly donor atom is generating and giving you electron. That is one mechanism. Second is thermally generated. Thermal mechanism is same that we had studied in the last class when energy is sufficient, energy is given, energy, electrons become free. That is thermally generated. So number or density of electrons is much greater than that of holes in this case. Number density of electron is very much greater than that of holes in this case. See, even if you draw the energy band diagram, no, let me show you. If, if you draw the energy band gap, this is the conduction band. Here you have the valence band. So all the electrons are available in valence band only. We are talking about semiconductors. These are all the electrons are present in the valence band. This is, remember this, we had studied this is the lowest energy level of the conduction band and this is the highest energy level of the valence band. This becomes the energy gap. This time, the energy gap will be near the conduction band because electrons are more. You have more of electrons present. So this energy, the, somewhere here, you will get the energy, which is 0 0.045 electron volt, which was necessary to make the electron free. Fine. So uh, one more thing, class. This is specifically for silicon. If you want to remember it for germanium, germanium, it, it will be 0 0.01 electron volt. This will be for germanium. 
these are energy level of donor atoms energy level of donor atoms clear class it means phosphorus this electron is present when sufficient energy of 0.045 electron volt or 0.01 electron volt is tried this becomes a free electron and this is available for conduction and these are what energies these are nothing these are basically ionization energies which you have studied in atom these are ionization energies note down details about n type then we'll move on to p type any queries if you have please let me know because this is all theoretical so let me know wherever you are having any difficulty
See, class P type of semiconductors, you have trivalent dopants. So, like aluminium, silicon, silicon atom was present here. I had taken aluminium. Now, there will be a difference. Aluminium has only three electrons, while silicon has four. So, at one part, there will be vacancy. Let's say this is one electron, this is one electron, and this is one more electron that is completed. But see class, here if you notice what happens from this particular silicon-silicon atom, what happens? This bond gets broken and this electron comes and completes this octet that is present for aluminium. So if this electron is moving class, what will be created? hole a hole will be created so here what happens is basically a hole gets created a hole gets created and this is available for conduction because electrons are bound now electrons are not free see you do not have bonded electrons now you only have holes present these holes are available for conduction. Now, each atom of aluminium will be contributing for holes. So if all the aluminium atoms that are present, all will be contributing for holes, you will get number of holes greater than number of electrons. Uh, let me write it. Each atom of aluminium contributes for holes. So you get number of holes greater than number of electrons. This is the difference that comes. And see aluminium, this time did, this didn't give any electron. It took an electron from the atom. So these dopants, these are known as acceptor dopants, acceptor atoms. And what was the name given to the pentavalent atoms? Hmm. Trivalent or acceptor atom. Pentavalent were? Donor, donor atoms. Hmm. Yes or no? Salman, yes. Khalid. Memona, are you present? Okay, Mamuna. Fine class. So here, this is the mechanism that you get. Now, holes are generated by what mechanism? Same thing. One are thermally generated. See, these electrons are actually thermally generated. No. So if electrons move, that only leads to formation of holes. So two mechanisms, again, you have two mechanisms, acceptor atom, another is thermally generated. Now, if you draw the energy band gap also, see, this is the conduction band. This will be the valence band. See, this will be the energy band gap that will be present. This will be the lowest energy level for conduction. This will be highest energy level for band. This time, the energies that you have to remember for the acceptor atom, these will be near the valence band. Fine. So remember class two conclusions for N type of semiconductors, number of electrons were greater than number of holes. For P type of semiconductors, number of holes are greater than number of electrons. Remember these things. And NE is what? NH is what? C, number of number density for electrons is any. NH is number of holes. These are used for extrinsic semiconductors. NI was number density for intrinsic. So one relation between NE, NH, and NI is that NI whole square is equal to NE into NH. This is also huge sum. Note P type down. We have one important topic that is PN junction, which is also one of the core topics. Like this was a major part. Another major part is PN junction. Let's complete with PN junction. Then small, small topics will be left. Did you all see your schedule for the tests? Mock tests schedule have been 
given on WhatsApp as well, no? Just have a look.
Class C, PN junction is basically, you can get a question on PN junction. What is a PN junction? Explain with the help of diagram, depletion layer, and all these theory questions are majorly from your second book. So see, PN junction is basically single crystal. See, single crystal means a single crystal is present where one half portion is doped with pentavalent atoms and the other half is doped with trivalent atoms. So it means one part you get as P type and other part is known as N type. Let's say this is P type and this is N type. So in N types, what are the majority charge carriers? Electrons or holes? Yes, class. Electrons. Good. Good memory. So in N type, you have more of electrons, while in P type, you have more of holes present. So here, what will happen? Here, you will be having more of electrons present. Negatively charged ions, electrons will be present. In, uh, in N type, you have <laughs> the majority charge carriers as electrons. Let's say these are the electrons that are present. And very few electrons will be present in P type. And opposite will happen when you take it for holes. Holes will be in majority in P type. These are in majority in P type. While in the N type, these are in minority very few you will be able to observe so understand one more thing class c junction means boundary between p and n type that i have written no a pn junction cannot be just made by placing a p type semiconductor in close contact with n type do not think that you will take a p type semiconductor and on one hand you will take an n type and you will using uh, tape and any material you can join it and that makes p type no this is a single crystal. That's why this line is important. Single crystal. Single crystal. On one side, they are doped. They are made to be P-type and one N-type on the separate. Two separate semiconductors cannot have a continuous contact at the atomic level. Level Junction will behave as a discontinuity for the flowing charge. So both acceptor and donor impur impurities must be grown in a single. This can be silicon, germanium, any. So it can be grown on silicon or germanium. Any impurity, uh, silicon or germanium. Fine. So P-type or N-type silicon crystal can be obtained by adding acceptor or donor impurity into silicon melt while growing in a crystal. Fine. Now see unbiased PN junction, depletion region, potential barrier, certain important things are present. Two processes involved during formation of PN junction are diffusion and drip. I have written the definitions below, so do not worry about it. Just listen to me carefully. See class, when a PN junction is formed, the P side of the junction has a higher concentration of holes, as we have seen just now. And on the other side, N types has N type of semiconductor. N, N side, basically, you can say, has a N side has a higher concentration of electrons. So, due to the concentration gradient at the junction, there's a concentration gradient. Here you can notice holes are in majority, holes are in minority, electrons are in majority, electrons are in minority. So because of this difference that is arising, concentration gradient that is arising, holes begin to diffuse from P side to the N side. Holes begin to diffuse from the P side to the N side because of the concentration gradient. And electrons begin to diffuse from N side to P side. These electrons begin to diffuse from N side to P side. Fine. 
So as holes diffuse from P to N, if holes are diffusing from P to N, so if mm -hmm. electrons, holes are moving, what will it leave behind? Electrons? Now see, from the P type, electron holes are moving from the P side to the N side. And N type from the N side, electrons. Electrons are the majority charge carriers. See, electrons mm -hmm. are the majority charge carriers in N type semiconductors, while in while the holes, these are majority char uh, charge carriers in the P type. So they leave behind, if the holes are moving behind, they leave the negative acceptor atoms, right? All these, all the holes which are leaving, these will leave behind the negative ac acceptor ions. So what will happen? This will set up a negative layer on the edge of the junction. Why this negative layer has been created? Because all the holes have moved. All the holes have moved on the other side. Same thing will occur in case of N type. Electrons are leaving from N to P type, N junction to P junction. So when the electrons are leaving from N junction to P junction, they leave behind the positive ions positive entities will be left. So these positive charges, they will also get accumulated at the junction because of the moving, because of the moving of the electrons like this. So this phenomena, when the majority charge carriers move, majority charge carriers move means the holes from the P-type move to the N-type and the electrons move from the N type to P type, the majority charge carriers, these, when they move, this process is known as diffusion. So that is what has already been written, flow of majority charge carriers across the junction. So flow of holes from P to N and electrons from N to P. This phenomena, this is known as diffusion. So now see, positive ions were set up, negative ions were set up. This led to formation of depletion layer, this layer that you observe no, in between here, the layer that you are able to observe at this point, this layer is known as depletion layer. This layer, this is known as depletion layer. Fine. Now see, positive charges on one side, negative charges on the other side. One topic which you have already studied a long time back, that was electric field. So what happens, an electric field gets set up in the opposite direction. This sets up an electric field near the junction from N to P side. Positive ions are present over this side and negative ions are present over this side. So this sets up an electric field. Fine, so any hole near the junction is pushed from N to P side. Because of the electric field, rest of the things that are available, these things earlier occurred initially because of the concentration gradient. Now, once the concentration gradient has been removed, once the electrons are leaving their place, they are leaving behind positive ions. P type In the P-type, electrons are leaving, they are leaving behind the negative ions. So these, this leads to the formation of dep depletion layer. Depletion layer leads to the formation of electric field. Electric field is set up. Now, no charges are left in the small region, as you can see from here. Now, see, if electric field is present, electrostatics, you all, have, uh, you all are aware of, this sets, up an, uh, this sets up a potential also. You call this potential as barrier potential. So, because of barrier potential, see, now this is negative. Opposite side electric field was set up, no? Because negative wire charges are on this side and positive are on this side. Opposite electric field has been created. So now what will it do? It will attract positive ions from the N type and negative electrons from the P type. That is reverse will occur. Minority charge carriers of P type and N type will exchange. This phenomena is known as drift. See, so flow of majority charge carriers across the junction, flow of holes from P to N and electrons from N to P. This process is known as diffusion. Barrier potential was the accumulation of charges in P and N regions sets up a potential difference known as barrier potential. This potential difference sets up an electric field across the junction, which opposes further movement of majority charge carriers. And now the movement that will occur due to the electric field, now the minority charge carriers which are moving 
this phenomena is known as drip. So earlier only I had mentioned you that two processes are occurring. One is diffusion. Diffusion is simply flow of majority charge carrier. Second is drip. Understood. Now see, please class have a clarity in your mind regarding the majority and minority type of charge carriers. Uh, one, one, th one more thing, class. If the current also gets set up no, in this region, same current, you call this a diffusion current. Because of diffusion, whatever current is being set up because of movement of charge, charge you call that current as diffusion current. Now, we clear? So, for P type, majority charge carriers were holes minority charge carriers were electrons whereas for n type you had the majority charge carriers as the electron and minority charge carriers were the holes this is the difference that arises uh, before we start with diodes, note down this part, PN junction, and we'll come to diode. This now, if you have any doubts with this mechanism, ask me class right now only, because now we'll be just using this mechanism, PN junction only, PN junction diodes we have to start with.
see now pn junction diodes when you do know we will not be drawing this ent entire apparatus every time we will be showing p type n type both of it together but with the help of certain variables see for p type you have proper pn junction diode with you rest of the mechanisms that will be working will be the same but see for p type we use this triangular symbol this yeah. is for p type whereas for n type we use this straight vertical line so how will you combine it this will be the representation of pn junction so whatever you have studied throughout your current electricity chapter 3 in that you will be getting a diode as well in addition the way we had capacitors we had seen inductors we had seen resistors now in addition you will be having diodes but diodes function you will not be seeing the function we will see the circuits that time i'll tell you but just see the representation p n see if i draw it like this so this means here is n this is p junction whenever we will be using this symbol anywhere you see such symbol it means this entire diode only has been drawn diodes are basically they have metallic contacts and they are used for various applications but now see two types of biasing are involved if your p type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and n type is connected to negative terminal of battery we call that condition as the forward biasing so if positive terminal of the battery this is the battery if the positive terminal of battery is connected to the p type semiconductor while the n type is connected to the negative terminal so now certain conclusions what will happen here see flow of majority charge carriers occur remember this point flow of majority charge carriers occurs in this case and what happens to the barrier potential see let's say total potential of the battery is v mm -hmm. and for the diode it is vb so barrier potential decreases wow. fine barrier potential will decrease so effective barrier potential decreases and hence energy barrier across the junction also decreases majority charge carriers that is holes from p side and electrons from n side begin to flow towards the junction what happens to the width of the depletion region c this is the depletion region this is the positive side let's say this is the n type this is the p side right p side and n side you have so majority charge carriers will move diffusion of electrons and holes will occur see when electrons and holes from here holes are moving from here electrons are moving plus negative it will lead to recombination so if the layer was this much thick let's say this much thick this was the depletion layer layer now what will happen one negative one positive one negative one positive like this it will combine with each other so once it will combine that will lead to reduction in the or decrement in the depletion layer layer so flow of majority charge carriers occur across the junction barrier potential decreases width of depletion region decreases and resistance also of the depletion region it decreases fine Dep depth of the, this resistance of the depletion region also decreases in the circuit you will be getting this uh, junction biasing now see opposite to this you have first tell me is this clear forward biasing is clear then only i'll move to reverse biasing clear or not yes teacher clear okay now see reverse biasing me na see just the opposite will occur p type will be connected to the negative terminal of battery while the Uh, n side will be connected to the positive terminal of the battery opposite ho gaya na p with negative n with positive so this is known as reverse biasing now everything will be different this was the potential of the cell this was the barrier potential of the diode so this time barrier potential will increase the barrier potential will increase and majority charge carriers these move away from the junction so if majority charge carriers are moving away from the junction let's say this is the depletion region now majority charge carriers are moving 
if elect let's say hole is moving that will lead to formation of a negative ion negative ion on this side an electron is leaving the junction it is moving towards itself it will so can you see width of de depletion region did it increase or decrease depletion region according to you Increase. increase salman see yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, increase. Uh, yes this is increasing or more layer are getting more number of layers are getting added no so this will increase see just opposite things whatever you study for and class is at times when the exam it becomes confusing what was under which heading like sometimes students do what they reverse whatever is written for reverse and forward so be precise please make some tricks mnemonic something remember for reverse what all things are included for for what what all things are included so opposite things will happen potential increases majority carriers move away from the junction in forward they were moving towards the junction resistance will now increase no current will flow across the junction fine note down these points i think i've already written all these points yes identification and forward and reverse is important that we will see first note down this point then we will see identification of all this pn junction diode
Yes, class. Now see how to identify with forward and reverse biasing. If you see a higher voltage is connected, <clears throat> higher voltage is connected with the P type mm -hmm. and lower voltage is connected with the N type. So that means that is forward biasing. Just a second, just a second. Yes, class C. Like here, look at this first example. Here, what is happening? 10 volt and 3 volt. So 10 volt is at higher voltage. So 10 volt is at higher and P is connected to higher. So that means this is forward biasing. Look in the second case, plus 3 minus 3. Plus 3 is again greater than minus 3. So plus 3 will be greater than minus 3. It means this is also forward. See here, 10 volt and 5 volt. Can you tell me, forward or reversed? Forward or reversed? Reversed. Reversed, good. Because N type is connected to higher. So this is reverse. See, minus 3, minus 10. Minus 3 is greater. So greater 1 is connected to N. If greater 1 is connected to N, so this will be, yes. Answer Khalid? Reverse, no? Teacher, for yes, reverse. Yes, reverse. For fifth one, see, whenever you have the symbol, you know that this is, <coughs> voltage is zero. So if voltage is zero, then this is lesser voltage. This is plus five higher voltage. So higher voltage connected to the lesser one. If this is connected to the lesser one, then this becomes forward biasing. Here you have negative voltage and here you have zero voltage. So obviously zero will be greater. So this makes it reverse biasing. Like this you have to write it. Write it quickly.
like this, you will be getting questions. So you have to identify reverse and forward biasing. Uh, done. Still doing, completed what? Done, ma'am. Done. Okay. See the circuits that you will get, no? These will be seen. Ah, uh, yes, one more thing. Reversed bias and forward bias. See, if you see anywhere that your circuit is forward biased, this is the PN junction that is there for both reversed and forward biased. In case reverse bias, this behaves as an open circuit, means remove the wire. And in forward bias, it behaves as a short circuit. Now you know how to solve current electricity. You have already studied short circuit and this behaves as an open circuit. Look here, class. Let me show you one question. See, it is this one, junction one, junction two. Please tell me, one is forward biased or reversed biased? Look here, this is the battery. Forward biased or reversed biased? Yes, class. Forward, reverse, answer me in the chat box. First one forward, second one reversed. First forward, second reverse. Good, correct. So if this is the case, this is forward, this is reverse. So forward bias will behave like an like a short circuit. So a straight wire, replace it with a straight wire, 10 ohm. And this behaves as an open circuit. So if you take, if you do not take, that doesn't matter. And here you have the battery as 10 ohm. This is 10 volt. So normal, uh, normal circuit that you have, 10 ohm, 10 ohm connected in series, battery of 10 volt, equivalent resistance, both are in series, add it, 20 ohm. Voltage, if current is asked, you can use V uh, is equal to IR, so I will be 0.5. Fine, right? like this, rest of the questions, you know how to solve it. Uh, this was... Okay, graph, no. Uh, do one thing, note this down, then characteristic is left. Let us complete that.
see class when we say no characteristics vi characteristics vi characteristics means vi graph now we know for conductors conductors obey ohms law it means vi graph is a straight line curve but when you plot it for semiconductors it won't be a complete straight line graph right so leave this part yes characteristics of pn junction this is left and one for rectifiers is left see if it is forward junction connected like this this is just same circuit milliampere because current is large if the current is lesser we would have taken microamperes so milliamperes we are taking pn junction is there connected this is a rheostat voltmeter just the circuit is connected the rest of the things are same switch circuit battery everything is there when you see the graph graph is not linear you get a graph where there's a jerk present initially it is linear look here class initially it is linear linear and at, at this point you see a jerk where it is non linear that jerk is known as knee voltage now you do not have special purpose devices so no need to go into the detail, details and there are very less chances also that this year questions will come from vi characteristics but let us prepare since it's a part of your syllabus so when you see a graph voltage current graph this is known as forward characteristic and if we even if you know calculate the graph slope this part will be change in current this part will be change in voltage that will be the si diode slope which you can see fine class same thing if you take it for reverse bias this is the reverse bias c positive is connected to the negative negative is connected to the positive opposite this is the graph which you get zener diodes were usually uh, uh, earlier used to be a part of your syllabus now it has been deleted in zener diodes you had this entire topic zener diode where breakdown voltage breakdown voltage will occur so here voltage current character see what did i say in case of reverse bias the resistance is very large so current will be lesser so here you get the current in microamperes so this is the graph that you obtain and same thing a breakdown point that comes from suddenly suddenly the current rises that point is known as breakdown voltage so this is it uh, one question let us practice see this suppose that supposedly this is a graph that is given to you fine current is given in milliamperes and voltage is given you are asked to find out resistance resistance of it and you are asked to find resistance in all the cases let's say 1 2 3 in all the cases you are asked to calculate the resistance let me show you. yes resistance at current when current is at 10 milliampere resistance when current is 15 milliampere resistance when current is 1 microampere so all these things here 10 milliampere 15 milliampere and here it is 20 milliampere and the question you have 1 microampere means this part not this one so 1 was 10 20 and 1 now see how will we solve this for the first part that is when your current is 10 milliampere c class current is 10 milliampere for 10 milliampere how much voltage can you see in the graph 10 milliampere voltage is how much for 10 milliampere slip all of you memona salman khalid present or not yes or no at least yes ma'am i am here yeah. okay see this is 10 milliampere for it voltage will be 0.5 volt so resistance will be what you have to find out resistance current is 10 milliampere if voltage is 0.5 simply directly calculate the current so current for the first part yeah. see for the first part if you calculate the current i is given as 10 milliampere so here you have it for the first part resistance will be voltage divided by current voltage we had seen it was 0.5 volts current is given as 10 milliamperes milliamperes we cannot use it we have to convert it into the si unit so 10 to the power minus 3 amperes so this will be 50 si unit of resistance we'll put as ohms so 50 ohms now see same thing if you take it for 15 milliamperes see for 15 milliamperes you do not have specific value of voltage in the graph for 10 milliamperes we had the exact value that was 0.5 
but for 15 we do not have so how will we take it we'll take the change in current and change in voltage do you see this is actually lying it in the middle uh, on the screen uh, definitely it's not that clear but when the question this is a question from your ncrt only back exercises from semiconductors so here we'll take the change in voltage here we'll take the change in the current's value that will come so 0.5 you know one you know here it's current you know 20 is here and 10 is here so from here only if you calculate see the change in current that will come this will be 20 minus 10 that is 10 milliamperes and from here 1 minus 0 0.5 that is 0.5 volts so change in voltage you have change in current you have now can you calculate the resistance for the second part right so for the second part see i1 was 10 milliamperes i2 was 20 milliamperes so delta i will be i2 minus i1 so delta i will be 20 minus 10 that is 10 milliamperes uh, same thing v1 was 0 0.5 volt v2 is 1 volt so change in voltage will be v2 minus v1 change in voltage will be uh, 1 minus 0 0.5 that is 0 0.5 volts so if you calculate resistance will be change in voltage by change in current change in voltage is again 0 0.5 same thing you're getting 10 milliampere so 10 to the power minus 3 same answer 50 ohms now see last part last part had the current different no one micro ampere so one micro ampere this becomes this is the case for reverse bias that's why you're having the current as micro amperes because resistance is huge current becomes very less so current is in micro amperes this by just looking at the graph also you should be able to predict whether the graph is being plotted for forward biasing or reverse biasing here it was given in milliamperes now this is given in microamperes so now simply current is given as one microampere for which you can see the voltage is 10 volts so look here 10 volt is given one microamperes is given voltage resistance has to be now calculated so resistance this will be again voltage by current so voltage was 10 and this was 1 microampere so again we'll convert it into 10 to the power minus 6 amperes right so here you have one that makes it 10 to the power 7 like this you have to calculate if you have any question regarding the graph so these are vi characteristics graphs have you plotted till where had you written graphs have you written uh, from the question you okay you have not written fine fine note the note down the characteristics of pn junction so that completes with pn junction one small topic is rectifiers that we'll do right now theory portion comes from rectifiers also note it down let's complete with that as well. and class special purpose diodes have been deleted from your cbse syllabus from your board exam it won't come but in your entrances after class 12 all those need the special purposes diodes will still come but for your cbsc board examination you don't have now special purpose diodes zener diodes have been cancelled uh, photo diode solar cell all these are not a part of your syllabus <laughs>
All right, class. Now see rectifiers. Rectifiers is a very small topic. Rectifiers basically <clears throat> rectifiers basically convert AC into DC. So the way you have your mobile chargers, it converts AC into DC. So two types of rectifiers are present: half wave rectifiers and full wave rectifiers. In half wave rectifiers, you have a proper power supply. The way now we had a mutual induction transformers. So step down transformer is, is present with a single diode. So what happens? Just a second. Huh. So what happens? Let me show you how the graph will look like. See, let's say uh, this induces positive here. So diode will read it positive positive that will lead to formation of forward biasing so it will lead then negative negative forward then that will lead to reverse bias so it won't read it then again forward biasing like this you will be having the graph for half wave but see if suppose i connect two diodes like this if i connect two diodes so what will happen for all the waves see here if this is positive, this will be negative. So if one is at forward, the second one is at uh, the reverse bias, this forward one will read it. Then again, negative, positive. So positive one, then a negative one. Again, one of the forward biasing, this will <coughs> read it. Again, read it. Because here what happened in case of biasing in half wave, only one diode was present. Right, only one diode was present. So reverse bias does not perform any conduction. Here, reverse bias is not performed. When forward bias, bias is present, when as soon as this becomes forward bias, circuit is read and a graph is plotted. Then it becomes negative. Reverse bias, it does not read. Forward bias, it reads. Negative reverse bias, is that it does not read. But here what happens in case of full wave rectifiers, the one that was getting missed is read by the second diode. So you have two diodes, D1 and D2. This is the graph that is plotted and you can see frequency is actually doubled. Do you see the output voltage? Frequency is doubled. Here, you were getting single wave. Here, frequency is twice for the full wave. This is what is all about the rectifiers, which you need to study briefly. Mainly your questions will come from PN junction and rest of the questions will come from N type and P type. So note it down, text me done once completed.
And what about you both, Salman and Khalid? Memuna has completed. Have you both also completed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, 